Hi everyone, today I want to show you some ideas I had with Runnables. Most of you on my channel probably know the Langchain expression language and the Runnable interface. I did a lot of videos about that. It uses operator overloading to create something that looks like pipes in the terminal. So you can pipe data from an input to another Runnable to another Runnable and then you have got some output. And to be honest, I missed some pre-built ones with Langchain and experimented a bit and created my own Runnables. So please let me know if some of them are useful for you or not. And of course, also feel free to share your own ideas. Okay, I'm in VS Code and if you want to follow along, you can also get the code from the link in the description. So first, let's import some runnables. We import runnable pass-through, which does not change the data, and runnable lambda, which allows a custom function to be piped. Okay, so I think that's quite easy here. We pipe one runnable, then use the pipe operator, use another runnable, Again, the pipe operator and another runnable. If we use then the invoke method, which is one of the standard methods from the runnable interface, we can see that the input does not change because this runnable does not change anything. We can also use this runnable lambda here to create this in uppercase. So here nothing happens, then it gets uppercase, and here again nothing happens. So nothing really spectacular. When you build larger applications, you normally heavily rely on environment variables. So for example, in a testing environment, you want a different database than in production. So what I wanted was a runnable that does something based on a Boolean value. So it works a little bit like the runnable lambda. That's why I called it conditional runnable lambda. So what you can do is that you can pass a function and you can also pass a condition. That condition can be a callable, so a function, or it can directly be a Boolean value. And in the invoke method, which you have to implement because we implement the runnable interface, we first check if self condition is a callable. And if that's the case, we pass the input value, which we pass here to the invoke method, pass that to the condition and check if that is a true or false. If that's not a callable, we will directly set this condition met variable based on the condition we set in the constructor of the conditional runnable lambda. If the condition met is true, then we want to execute the function which we pass to the constructor and pass the value to that function. And then at the end, return the result from that runnable. So I'm gonna show you that, how that looks like. So we get this runnable. So we've got runnable pass through and then the conditional runnable lambda, which gets a Boolean value first, which is false and then the function input to upper. So that's exactly the same what we've got here. And we pipe that to a runnable pass through. So if we execute that, we can see some print statements in a runnable lambda and the condition, as we can see, is not met and we return the value unchanged. So we return hello. If the value is true, then we can see that the condition was met and the value is uppercase. Another runnable I find useful is a retry runnable because normally when you use a runnable, you can have the case that you talk to a database or an API and the API or database is not available. And then the whole chain will fail, but we can prevent that by retrying that, let's say three times and get it to work, let's say in the second or third try. So this is why I implemented this. We've got an invoke method again and we've got this retries attribute. So we start with attempt zero, and then we run a while loop. So while the attempts are smaller than the amount of retries, then we will try to execute the invoke method. And if everything worked, we just return the value from that runnable. Otherwise, we will raise the exception, and inside the exception, we will then increase the attempts plus one. And if we've got more attempts than allowed retries, then we will raise the exception. Otherwise, we'll continue to run in the while loop. So let's try it like this. So we create a runnable lambda. To that runnable lambda, we pass a function that fails with a chance of 50%. And then we wrap around the retry runnable around this runnable lambda with five retries. And we also are able to define a delay that delay is helpful because when you have a database that's down, you don't want to instantly uh, retry to access it, but let's say wait for five seconds or so, and after five seconds, try to access the database again. So in this case, we just use one second. 
Okay, so this works. Maybe let's increase the chance to fail a little bit. So let's try it again. And now we can see attempt zero failed, attempt one failed, and in the third try, we are able to get our output. So that's how you can create a runnable that could interact with a database or an API. Another useful runnable could work in a similar way or have the similar idea, but instead of retrying, it could use a fallback. So I created this fallback runnable, which gets two attributes, a primary runnable and a fallback runnable. So we then in our invoke method, try to invoke the primary runnable, pass in the input value. And if we get an exception, then we want to use the fallback runnable. So we create it like this. We create an instance of the fallback runnable, pass in this conditional runnable. And here we say true, then we want to execute it. And here we pass a Lambda function and we want to divide one by zero. This will of course raise an error. And if an error is raised, then we want to execute this runnable lambda. This runnable lambda only returns the string fallback. So let's invoke that and we can see that the condition evaluated to true. So this was executed and we ran an error. And after the error, the runnable lambda was then executed. And we can see that the output here is fallback. Okay, so one last runnable is a cache runnable. Let's say if you have got a complex computation in a runnable that often gets used with the same value, then there's no reason to compute it again and again since it takes a lot of resources. So we can use the input and create this cache dictionary. So for every time you use the invoke method, in this cache you save the input value and the result of that input value. So if we create our runnable, let's say we've got then this very time consuming computation. And we create a runnable lambda and wrap around the cache runnable around that. So we've got a runnable pass through, our cache runnable and the runnable pass through. Again, this takes some time. So if we use it like this, chain invoke the first time, then we can see that it takes like two seconds. And if you run it a second time, then we can see that we now use the cache for that. Okay, that's it. Let me know your ideas of useful runnables in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye bye.